Good afternoon. We renew our discussions. Uh, and um, it's a great pleasure for me to uh, introduce Dr. Jorge Dejman, our guest, one of our distinguished guests from Slovenia. Dr. Dejman uh, is an historian, a museum uh, curator, archivist, philosopher, writer, editor. He was uh, director of the Slovenian National Archives. Until very recently, he was uh, director of Ljubljana's excellent, as I can testify, a National Museum of Contemporary History. He has also for many years been chairman of the Commission on Concealed Mass Graves in Slovenia. And this um, topic is of particular importance to us in Croatia because many of those whose remains are in those graves are Croats. Uh, Dr. Dejman is uh, an independent intellectual. He is a, a fearless man of integrity and as a result he has plenty of difficulties with the present Slovenian government, which is unfortunately philo-communist, and as a result of which uh, wishes to uh, gently, uh, slowly, but uh, resolutely and remorselessly uh, rehabilitate uh, the uh, Yugoslavian communist ethos and uh, those who were responsible for so many appalling crimes at that time. So we very much look forward to hearing what Dr. Dejman has to say in his presentation. And also we hope to learn lessons from Dr. Dejman about what we in Croatia should do and what we should insist should be done. Thank you. Dear audience, uh, I think sometimes pictures are more talkative than words. We will begin with short video, uh, which will uh, introduce you in Slovenian memorial landscape and uh, will tell you that is no simple way out or in uh, of history. It's the situation we are dealing with, as Mr. Has said, Croatians, Serbians, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Montenegro, the whole Yugoslavia. So, we will begin. I will just translate the subtitles. It's the story about Abyss below Macesno, Gurica in Kuczewski Rock. It's under Ljubljana, near border to Croatia. And in first 10 days of June 45, communist authorities has murdered in the Abyss, as we know now, more than 3,450 prisoners of war, probably Slovenians. Because the whole location was mined and blasted in approximately 55, after 10 years after the war, we had to remove the blasted rocks. And in 2019, about first thousand cubic meters of rocks was excavated till we get to the uh, remains of the victims.
Uh, in 2019, we also get this uh, remains of at least 36 people who have survived the fall in the abyss in touch, try to try to save, save them themselves and side caves.
Uh, so uh, I mean, I, you saw some facts finding missions we are doing in Slovenia. Uh, to see the Slovenian situation, it's not a simple problem. It's uh, I think it's a problem like uh, like all uh, ex Yugoslav republics have. But the fact, uh, the problem is quite simple, or truth, or coming back to the old problems. Uh, I will, I will try to show you how the, how the Slovenian society is dealing with, and the problems you can see is 2017 monument for war and post-war victims. It was a huge achievement of President Pahor, and uh, it was, uh, Keith Lowe has written the book about the 25 most unsuccessful monuments to the World War II on Earth, and he selected also the Ljubljana monument. He put it in part three monsters, and he say uh, people are passing by, also politics is passing by, noticing but not noticing, remembering or not remembering. So, Slovenian society has problem to tell the truth. Uh, this statement is important because it is in the center of Slovenian fight for national soul or identity we are, you are talking so much about. Is Slovenia, Republic of Slovenia, a democratic, independent, different state than ex-socialist republic? Uh, Peter Jambrek, first president of Constitutional Court, says old Socialist Slovenia and Yugoslavia was based on murder, robbery, violence, interventions, and deceptions, lies, indoctrination, manipulation. I think it's a simple summary of the old system. And he said that participation in original murder we saw in the beginning and the silence about it were essential features of the system. So to see it or not to see the original crime is real problem, and also institutional court has this, not one, many, some decisions, near 20, decided that uh, in 45, so after World War II, one repressive totalitarian system was replaced by another, and that liberation didn't occur till 90. So now we have a government that, try, that is trying to, to persuade that that was not so. And the, the independence in 15th anniversary of uh, Republic. We had uh, this permanent exhibition then in 2007 on Ljubljana Castle with uh, Jansha as president of government, was a Petrele president of her government. And this exhibition was closed in one day. After decision of uh, mayor of Ljubljana, Zoran Jankovic and city of Ljubljana is owner of the castle. Uh, 2021, uh, 30 years of the Republic. So again, Janša's government established the Museum of Slovenian Independence uh, 2023. This new government uh, abolished the museum and they also used the opportunity. They merged together the Museum of Slovenian Independence and museum where I was director. So they have, <laughs> let's say in one way, uh, shot away the Museum of Independence and me. So it was uh, quite an ambitious operation. But the other fact is that, that communists didn't like, uh, uh, didn't like uh, democracy, didn't like any idea of Slovenia as an independent state and the political, political police and uh, pol politics, communist politics uh, to, uh, in generally persecuted all who were fighting for any idea of uh, democracy and independence. Uh, so let's one case, Janis Toplišek was leader of Union on Slovenian Anti-Communists. He was arrested kidnapped and arrested in 35 and 33 and 35 shot while tried to escape the prison. And now the point of new Stalinism, let's say so, we have a perverse combination of old boys network, so old guys and this new NGO movement you were talking about so much. Uh, they are trying to import the revised Titoist system of uh, revolutionary traditions and they 
they are using lies, taboos, mythomantia, they are defending war crimes and crimes, and they are uh, there for the impunity of communist criminals. Uh, the best actor of this uh, Kuchanism, let's say so, is uh, Mayor of Ljubljana, Zora Jankovic. He is preventing the, bur the, the burial of murder trauma, we will mention later, and other, another, the other victims of communism. And he is telling uh, stories such as is this one, uh, that Ljubljana is city hero. So Ljubljana is communist city hero. There will be no monuments to communist Hungary. But it is stupid lie. These are memory, uh, 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 memorial, parish memorial plates with more than 1,000 names, mostly home guards, and in the, nearly in the center of Pliana there is mass grave with 82,000 victims who were murdered in Brizario Abyss after the water was polluted versus home to Kutsia Dolina. They are there now, a sculpture monument. And all over his uh, war, war cemetery of uh, Slovenian anti-communist units collaborating with uh, Germans. Uh, some official commemorations were held there, and, now, and then uh, it was a myth that political police has excavated all the remains and there is nothing there. When we were with archaeological research, we confirmed that this, the mortal remains are still there. But uh, city of Ljubljana is removing crosses like this one, and the dogs are walking and training on war cemetery. That's typical idea of how the right to grave and memory is uh, uh, executed in, uh, let's say, new Stalinism in Slovenia. Uh, the next event in 2003 is burial of ex-chief of secret political police with state honor. It was by governmental decision in January 23. In April 23, Ministry of Culture has uh, has been has been there on uh, commemorating 81st anniversary of funding of Communist Party of Slovenia and no dialogue about the fact that Communist Party is a terrorist organization the most criminal in Slovenian history and president of republic of slovenia for her anti fascism yes anti communism no and revolution is basis for democratic and independent Slovenia. I must say they are quite funny in long term because they didn't succeed with this offensive in old system, and I think they will not succeed in this one. But why they are so nervous? In 2002, I led the international project comparing uh, national socialism and communism. And they were furious on both sides, so communists in uh, Slovenia and Haider's People's Party in Austria, they were both madly furious because we were comparing uh, two systems. An uh, interview of a uh, very well-known historian, Jorge Mujina, with me on national television. Again, uh, so it's August 2018, it's now nearly, demonstration of communist veterans uh, in Kopar. And, but they didn't know how to answer simple questions. Didn't partisans kill more Slovenes than the occupiers? More, more, more unarmed than armed? More after the war than during it? In, didn't the communists provoke the civil war? And is ideological collaboration with Stalinism is not a shame and crime? These are simple questions. But no dialogue. In Slovenia, as in Croatia, I think, uh, open dialogue about this question is not possible, but it's not only crimes, there are all other features of communist regime after the war, I will just mention shortly. So secret political police, the density of collaborators of secret political police was the same as the German Democratic Republic. So Tito's police is no, is no less harmful to, to, uh, to, co to normal cohabitation of people than uh, Stasi in East Germany. Uh, sentenced to death, official list has two, in seven years, till 52, has 2,018 persons. I found at least 100 more. Few hundred are missing. Uh, dozens of people were arrested, kidnapped, and killed. And a very dirty mechanism was 
sentenced people to death and then uh, sentenced to let's say 20 years of prison. Killing on Iron Curtain, you have here the official report in less than a year, uh, in eight months, let's say 1,092 people were killed on Yugoslav borders to Austria, to Italy and uh, to, to Italy and Austria toward West. That's more than in 30 years of Berlin Wall. More than 25,000 people were sentenced on, uh, we are talking about population about a million and a half. Uh, were, were sentenced on uh, political trials, so Stalin's show trials. In prisons of camp arrested were at least 70,000 people and thousands of other people were sentenced by, uh, 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 let's say, for two years of forced labor by decisions of local authorities with no, no, uh, by 84, more than 90% of private enterprises was confiscated and it was so simple. War against farmers after uh, a, a lot of uh, repressive measures, exploitive measures. After 43, the land uh, ownership was uh, limited to 10 hectares and it was basically uh, killing the farmers was one of the basic claims of the system, permanent war against the revolution of church, so uh, killing priests, arrested them, sentencing them, and believers were still the whole system second-class citizens. Uh, so uh, I would say resistance on foot, like in other, uh, more than 45,000 people tried to um, escape, uh, succeeded to escape till 65. You must know the Yugoslavs got passports after year 60. Before you can, you wouldn't, you couldn't go out. Ne? So, uh, and uh, approximately 30,000 was uh, were arrested on the border and sentenced. Uh, but I must say the history is always somehow funny. God smile, I say. When we analyze the development of Communist Party, we see that it was permanently in self-destruction. It was in, so as I told you, one million and a half, more than 210,000 people were members joined uh, in this period, more than 130,000 went out. So you see this, uh, let's say, logical destruction or self-destruction of Communist Party. The other important uh, thing is there was no democracy, no elections in principle, but participation on elections was always 100%, let's say so. Uh, but self-managing utopia was another destructive element of uh, communism. Uh, you see, the first was enormous complexity of the system. These are elections 60, uh, 86, 87, where 30, 330,000 uh, people were elected in different uh, self-management uh, let's say, delegations uh, and so on, uh, it was too much. And this irrational system also developed a new language that is now nobody can understand it. You cannot translate it, but you see self-governing communities of interest. It, was, it would be so-called self-management with dealing with people's interests, basic organization of joint work. It was enterprise, let's say, factory. And we must mention Lyubo Sirs. He was sentenced to death, uh, then uh, 20 years of prison. Uh, uh, I think he spent in jail uh, approximately eight years, fled to West, and he was pioneering criticism as management. Uh, he was decorated by Queen Elizabeth for supporting democracy in West. And transition justice. This is the other face of Slovenia. Slovenia has... Uh, has uh, recognized some basic rights to the victims of communism and also preserved all rights to the old communist or old veterans. And for both sides, a few billion euros was spent, a few thousand uh, rehabilitated with compensation on uh, show trials. Uh, about 35,000 uh, 35, 35, rehabilitations for victims uh, on the basis of law on the redress of injustices act. 
and about 40,000 of denationalization cases uh, uh, getting people were getting back uh, property or in nature or in uh, in um, in state papers but about gra th that why we are here right to grave and memory it was a complex process in slovenia and as you see the, the in old times we were talking about 60,000 weeks since about 40,000 but now we know we have name list of 100,000 you see with my victimological map of Slovenia where 10% of victims are in Ljubljanska Pokraj, Ljubljana region, where is the center of civil war. And 2% of population were killed, 30,000 people were killed in civil war. That's the, that's the same percentage as in uh, Spain and uh, United States, American civil war and Slovenia. And you see communists in first two years are killing 10 times more than anti-communist and after killing, after communist killing of thousand Slovenian civilians, the armed resistance begin. And after the war, 1% of population was killed in two months. With story of Drago Jancer, most known, most translated Slovenian writer, decorated as journalist in May 74, in November 74, sentenced to one year in prison because he bring from Austria a book about crimes in Kuchewski Rock. In 89, he led the, the project the Dark Side of the Moon. And then he, in 2010, he wrote a, a novel, I Saw Her That Night, translated in 20 languages telling the story about Xenia and Radu Hribar, probably the most, the richest Slovenian couple killed by communists in January 44. Nephew uh, has succeeded uh, to, to, uh, to, re to get rehabilitation for Radu Hribar. A couple was excavated in 2015 and President Pachor, who has made a lot, has, has helped us very much, uh, uh, unveil the plate, uh, memorial plate. But how this division of society worked, it was, I would call it party heaven and party hell. The victims were divided with, on that with right to, gra with grave and memory and party hell with taboo, on taboo, half, half approximately. And uh, the, the, the basic feature of regime was inventing, discovering enemies all the time. So they were external, national, class, worldview, philosophical, culture. And so it was society based on hatred and division. And uh, it was also uh, legalized by so-called uh, socio-political stability uh, that was condemned by constitutional court. And to see how this double world was working, this is list of uh, I call it uh, communist atheist burial, uh, graves under Red Star, about 20,000 buried. Also on partisan side, they didn't recognize 20,000 burials in Catholic graves family. And this is a uh, world of taboot death. So uh, concealed mass graves, about 750 at the time. And the second problem here, 2022, uh, declaring, uh, Jansch's government declared the 17th May as Day of Remembrance for Victims of uh, Communism and 2023, on the same day, on May the 17th, uh, this government cancels the day uh, of uh, remembrance. And why? Why was May 17th? On that day, uh, 54 civilians were murdered. Among them were 49 Roma people, most of them women and children. And in 42, uh, partisans killed more than half of Roma living in uh, south of Slovenia. This is the excavation of this group, a uh, pregnant woman, a woman that has fled away from the killing site and was, was caught and killed a few kilometers away. And they have, they have killed even the dogs and throw them on the remains. But, Slovenia is not a problem of Slovenia, it's a problem of Yugoslavia and Europe. So probably 100,000 victims in mass graves. Worst mass murder after the Second World War in Europe. 
worst fratricide of Slovenian population, worst fratricide of Croatian, Croatians in our histories. Uh, estimations of murder, I have talked with uh, different colleagues from Yugoslavia. Uh, I think we will, it will be between quarter of a million and 300,000. Uh, and why you see the, the video you saw is a result of technology we have developed from 2005 with destroyed archives, the only possi with uh, criminals that were lying, the only possibility is archaeology to tell, to give possibility the victims to tell us the story. And we began with topography of mass graves and uh, criminal political police operation reconciliation. And we must mention that in 2005, there was a com criminal complaint against Mitya Ribicic. It's no simple person. It was prime minister of Yugoslav government, president of Central Committee of Union of Communists of Yugoslavia, but he was saved by, uh, by court on biased interpretation of evidence and also by some faked, faked, this, faked facts by our colleague historians. So uh, when we begin with the research systematically, anti-tank trench in Tesno in 1999 by uh, construction of highway, they have 70 meters found 1,179 skeletons with archaeological research in 2007, we found that more than a layer of more than a meter thick of human remains since 94 meters. So it's more than 15,000 victims and probably the, the, the biggest, uh, the largest post-war to mass grave in Europe. You see the location in Maribor. And Maribor in uh, 1990, you see the reconciliation pyramid, so-called dedicated and grave of these victims. And from 2020, there's Park of Memories. Hudayama, 2009, uh, after breaking through 11 barriers, uh, we on March 3rd, we entered to mummified bodies on this uh, horizontal level. It was internationally, oh, this is uh, article in Frankfurt Rage, but it was published all around. Typical uh, product of Titoism are also these wire handcuffs. And these are some scenes from... So killing of wounded, sick and disabled all around. A group of women killed. A hidden ring hidden rosary. Uh, we also made an exhibition about the uh, Hudayama. What was uh, reaction of authorities? Uh, Daniel <coughs> Tirk, president, on Women's Day, March 8, he said, I'm here today for a first class subject, subject so Women's Day. I will not talk about the second class subject. Uh, luckily, he lost next elections. Uh, City of Ljubljana, April 20th, 2009, so Hitler's birthday, accidentally, they renamed the uh, uh, Tito Street in Ljubljana, but in 2011, the Constitutional Court prohibits, prohibited the renaming. Uh, only this group in a uh, horizontal uh, level was researched, and then they were waiting uh, the, because the government tried to uh, close the mine. But after <coughs> numerous protests in 2015, we can uh, exhumate all one, uh, 1,410 victims, and they were buried in Maribor in presence of high Slovenian and uh, Croatian authorities. And also uh, the legal we got the legal basis for work in 2015. And uh, these are the, uh, the mass graves. We have uh, worked some research or have arranged them in nature. This is, we are putting crosses, uh, tables and, uh, and fences. Identification of the victims, we have, we, uh, we are keeping all right femurs for possible integration in future. You, you see here some account, accountants of our, so more than 9,000 9, remain, 
and six, 162 war graves arranged in nature. And now back to Abyss at the end of Macesna Gurica. Uh, why it is important, on July 8, 99, it was symbolical funeral or murder Slovenians, but it was at the Abyss under Kren, about 30,000 people. Uh, president Kuchan, as first uh, ex uh, first president, uh, last president of uh, Central Committee of Communist Party, first president of Slovenia, Arbitro of Ljubljana. But in 2004, uh, we found uh, by object that this location under Kren is a Serbian, Montenegrin, and uh, Cro uh, Croatian location. And we asked the communist leaders, they know, they knew and they know that they were uh, playing games with Slovenian public, they don't answer. Uh, in 65, it was first mention of this abyss, uh, written by <coughs> by Alois Pozelnik, who had escaped before the cave uh, and uh, after lived in Argentina. Milan Zeitz, Franze Cusina, and Franze Dayak have published their memories, who had, uh, who had uh, escaped out of the cave. One that lived in Slovenia and died at 50 was Janko Svete. And important for Slovenian history is the fact that Janes Janša Sr., father of Janes Janša, also escaped from this cave. Uh, research has shown in 2004 that here, that here is probably Slovenian location, Catholic subjects, uh, Slovenian Mary of Help, uh, uh, symbols of uh, Slovenian home guards, uh, and uh, detector review showed where the victims were led to the abyss. As we saw, we uh, we must mention all this. Uh, all this area was before roof of the cave, and all this was blasted approximately in 55. Uh, the explosion was seen uh, 40 kilometers away. Uh, so first, uh, first remains found in 2009, layer of funds, and so reconstruction would be such it was the, the abyss is 30 meters deep. With Kolik Yamni criminalist at the beginning, at the end, and now so uh, 3,450 3, victims. And uh, in 2023, Ministry of Culture has, has been the exhibition about the abyss, and we still don't have a program for year 2023. And as a measure of hard reduction, no, uh, uh, no mainstream media in Slovenia published any uh, reasonable or earnest report about the fact. So I think the Slovenian way, as you see, is up and down. I think this uh, madness uh, we have now will go in history as historical waste, and we hope the truth will win. Thank you. Well, we are going to have some questions, but I think that that is a very shocking and moving sight. And I think that it is more appropriate before questions that we should stand up. That we should stand up and honor the victims. And those of us who are religious, pray for their souls for a minute. So, Dr. Dejman, you're kindly going to take questions. Yes. Um, I will just, you've got your mic. Who would like to ask a question? Stepo. So, thank you. Dr. Dejman, uh, thank you very much for your presentation and for coming to Zagreb. Uh, and all the work you've been doing. Um, I'm interested uh, to hear more about this uh, resistance uh, to research, uh, political resistance. So the, the ability of these former communist elites 
to maintain their complete control over what the public gets to see. Because we saw photos from this uh, presentation of massive amounts of Slovenians coming to these occasions to commemorate the dead. So obviously the ordinary people want to know the truth. But this censorship and control has been going on for decades since Slovenia and Croatia and the other countries have become independent. So what needs to be done aside from, you know, events like this and collaborating between people who actually care about the victims? What, what more can be done? Um, it's shocking to me, shocking that this new government simply abolished a national day of memory, just simply did it without probably even thinking about the political implications. They feel obviously confident enough to do this without uh, any risk. So it, it seems that many on the right side of this issue have, have failed have failed if, if we see the reality today. It's not much different in Croatia, perhaps a bit better, but not much better. So what what are some things we could, I can speak of course in the parliament about this negligence and about the terrible um, lack of action also from Croatia's side, because these are our, our people that are in these mass graves. What else can we do starting today to change things because I think this this um, event and similar ones could really encourage people, also young people, to actually do something. Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, the first problem is European framework when uh, European West doesn't want to hear the story of European East. They want, don't want to learn what communism is. So simple. In Brussels, simply you can you cannot get funding for such projects. This European level. Uh, on the other side, the European East uh, is not speaking one language. We are still divided. We don't have any closer cooperation. In Yugoslavian, let's say Yugoslavia, in our case, it's uh, somehow understandable. We were, after 48, excluded from Warsaw Pact, and we always imagined ourselves that we are something different. So that uh, Yugoslavia under Tito is something different, let's say, than uh, than Soviet bloc. But in, in principle, it is not. Uh, it is um, uh, it is excellent book about Yugoslavia's Coca-Cola socialism. <laughs> and that's the, as Mr. Miller was telling us the story, how the communists are telling the, uh, the capitalist story. They are telling us that Coca-Cola socialism was socialism, but it was in principle import of American uh, success, cultural and economic success in Yugoslavia. Uh, the next thing, of course, is, let's say, the problem of old boys network. Of course, it's uh, they want to import criminal tradition in democracy and impunity of criminals. It's a crime in, in itself. And we didn't succeed, I must say. We, we thought that all, all will understand that democratic and independent Republic of Slovenia is something different than totalitarian, one-party, repressive uh, Yugoslav state. We didn't learn children that there is difference. If even the Sweden are uh, trying to tell their youth what gulag is. We didn't. We allowed old guys' structure with historians, our dear colleagues, that they uh, maintained their story. So it is. it was Yugoslavia and it was Slovenia and now it's another Slo it's Slovenia again. Uh, to tell the difference is, is a huge problem. And, but there is, uh, I think, the, the project you saw, it is a project of science. When Dr. Ferenc says it's 70, 750 mass graves, it's science. It's cooling down the resistance. When you, you saw this video, it's science. Anthropology, anthropology tell us there is at least uh, 3,450 victims. We have found around 10,000 objects that are now researched. 
We, um, our commission has published five reports till now with more than 2,000 pages. In uh, October, we are planning the sixth report about. Uh, so f facts are here. This resistance, the so this coalition of uh, old boys or new Stalinists and uh, NGOs are playing in Slovenia is, uh, I would say, stupid. They are imagining that you can sell virtual reality in times where anyhow communication processes are open. Perhaps it was possible with political police, with closed borders, with persecution of of facts and people and so on and so on. But now uh, I must say uh, I admire them. I admire their optimism. They're very funny. Not, uh, you see in Slovenia you have German, German uh, Nemci, uh, is, has two, uh, two, two, uh, one is, uh, Germans and one is people who cannot speak. And I am uh, telling them that now in Slovenia all Germans are in partisans and they don't dare to talk, are in, in forest. So they have isolated the, themselves for normality in, in normal scientific, Let's say a, a, a colleague Mujina, you saw in that interview, he he published a book about the beginning of civil war in Slovenia. He has sold seven reprints, more than 5,000 copies. But no, the, nobody from left is trying to tell him that he's lying or there's something wrong. And this is the truth. Communists have provoked the civil war. Whatever they, they want, they are, they are, uh, no, uh, no propaganda can change the scientific fact. But dialogue could improve it. Of course, nobody is perfect. But this killing the dialogue is killing the democracy. And I think we must warn ourselves, we must wake up ourselves, we must warn the society and the world what is happening. And that's what we are trying to do. And I think in principle, these are the problems you were debating about. Problems of identity, problems of human person, problems of human rights, problems of... You see, it's this uh, communist atheist, atheist burial. They, were, they buried all the people under Red Star. But Red Star was not religion of, the, of these people. They were Catholics. So they banned the basic right to be buried in your religion. And so on and so on. And we must develop a new terminology. We must develop to talk about some reasonable things we didn't dare to see. I think, uh, let's say in Chile's case, you, you, uh, uh, you, uh, we saw that there is difference before what was there, what was now. And we must learn, uh, I must say that in principle, uh, it's also a problem between ex-Yugoslav republics. Uh, Mr. Reshin, I will tell you when we were meeting, or uh, today I met uh, Hassan Big, it's Latko. Uh, when our commission, he was a minister of, of culture. When we met him, it was in the morning. In the afternoon, the government has fallen in the same cooperation. Uh, we have excellent cooperation with Mile. Bogovic, Bishop of Udbina, but on systematic level, Republic of Croatia doesn't want to accept the identified Croatian victims from Slovenia. We have 500 of them who are waiting decision or to be buried after agreement in Slovenia or to be buried somewhere in Croatia. But you must know anyhow this Slovenian position is a privilege. We got out of Yugoslavia without bloody war. So we, we, we are not engaged in 91. We are engaged in 45. Our trauma is 45. Your trauma is 90, uh, 91, 95. It's also with Serbia. So it's in somehow in, Montenegro, I know Vujosevic, it's a fine guy. He counted uh, Montenegro victims, and it's also half half. Half killed by communists, half killed. So the process is going on in different phases, in different relations, but Slovenia has 
was in position to import the standards that was used in Srebrenica, were used in sub-Saharan Africa, and was also used in uh, in some cases of, dicta- of victims of dictatorship in South America. We were we were so lucky. And Mark, you have a question. Thank you very thank you very much for your excellent talk. Um, I think it's very important. My question is related, and you've already partially answered it, but um. I, 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 Stephen was saying, you know, Tito is like the second most fashionable person after Che Guevara. And it's a very telling thing that you have these college students, high school students, very fashionable revolutionaries wearing t-shirts of a murderer, right, on their, on their t-shirt with Guevara. And this, this fascination with Tito, um, oh yes, yep, this fascination with, with Tito. And so I guess my, my question is, there has been a general denial of the victims of crimes of communism in the West, in the United States, across. And young people, when I taught undergraduates, this was in Nicaragua, but many of them had been educated in the United States. They didn't know who Stalin was, right? So could you maybe articulate what one, why do you think, this is a a sweeping question related, why do you think broadly there has been a rejection or a failure to acknowledge the the crimes of communism? Because if I say, you know, Hitler killed millions of people, yes, they know that. Right, and that's good. That's good. They know that, and that's important. And I, I, when I taught them, I was very clear about about all the the crimes of the German National Socialists, fascists, etc. But complete unawareness, not only unawareness, but almost like Tito and Guevara, these are our heroes, revolutionary heroes. Could you comment on maybe this is more of a global question? Why, in your research, do you think uh, this this tendency to um, romanticize murdering dictators uh, still exists. Thank you. I would say, uh, first is anthropology. They were successful in dehumanization of victims as national traitors, as uh, class enemies, as uh, non-humans. And this uh, problem of uh, subject, one victim, one story, one grave, to come to the subject again. Because in principle, I see on this left-wing people, uh, even talking with my sons, they don't uh, recognize the suffering. They didn't suffer. They were just object of history, killed as waste. That's basic, basic question of, of empathy. Of course, to, to show you how, uh, when after one of these excavation, there was uh, uh, one clerk from Egyptian embassy, and he cried. He came to me crying. He said, it's impossible that Tito did it. <laughs> so it is, it is a religious, this religious construction. And this new Stalinism I'm, t- I'm talking about, we could call it civil religion. You were talking about, so <laughs> one estimation is there are <laughs> competing religions are um, uh, Christianity, Islam, and uh, uh, Marxism. But this civil religious uh, constitution, but in principle, it's nothing. There is no heaven, there is no, uh, uh, let's say, uh, <laughs> there is nothing we could believe in, in this world. But they are selling the story about, uh, let's say, the fairy tales. And in fairy tales, you need heroes, you need gods, you need angels. And cons- this uh, cult of uh, personality is not a simple story, I would say. In Slovenian politics after uh, 91, Milan Kuchan was first, who settled the cult of, uh, of personality with, of course, with media support. Next was uh, Janis Dernoshak. Now, uh, now the the let's say this uh, Stalinist link has invested approximately ten years of hard work to to demonize Janes Jansha, but anti Jansha is now hero. They de- they produced a cult of Janes Jansha, anti cult but cult. Uh, but to be reasonable uh, in Slovenia after this uh, constitution court decision in 2011 is forbidden to celebrate Tito. You can have some uh, memorial objects, something from before, but now it's forbidden. 
But on Yugoslav level, you have extremely complex situation where and what are these hopes or this, let's say, religious feeling uh, connected with Titoism. But I would say that no reasonable majority could be achieved when people would be honestly asked on, on basis of facts. I think in Serbia, it's a quite, it's the same division. Even in Croatia, you could, I think you could be in troubles when uh, the, the real questions would be asked. Civil war in Croatia is more terrible thing than civil war in Slovenia. Civil war in uh, Serbia, there were no partisans in principle. <laughs> But 80,000 people killed. Uh, Do we have any more questions, this gentleman? Uh, hi, I'm from Poland, so uh, it's very, very important uh, uh, with uh, what I said. I know if you are familiar with, for example, uh, Katyn massacre uh, done by uh, Russian communists and other like things. I think that Slovenia, in, in some in some way similar to Poland 10 years ago, because what we done, we, we had a similar problem that there was many people in Poland that denying the communism and uh, the like massacre of communism, uh, bad things which communism done. And it was uh, in some way interesting that uh, Polish people uh, in, 90, in 2013, 2015, there was really like, pop culture for uh, soldiers who was against uh, who were against uh, communism during the second world war and after after like uh, we we called them karst soldiers which uh, like in the forest to fight against communism uh, what what was like the interesting thing in our country uh, it was like uh, people in poland just make uh, the pop culture with uh, like uh, from uh, being anti-communist. For example, there were many people who wear anti-communist um, t-shirts with uh, sol uh, cast soldiers, uh, with people, things like that. There was many songs, etc. So maybe it's not a question. Maybe more like uh, some tip for you to make this this way because. Uh, after that, since 2015, we have uh, like really like uh, thick, w uh, thick line uh, between the post-Soviet uh, times and like now we we are mostly uh, we in Poland are mostly anti-communist, I think. Uh, and after that, we have the communization of our streets. I mean, no names of uh, of streets are uh, with com communist names. Before 2015, we have a lot of that. So maybe pop culture is the way you you should like do uh, the the way you you should go. Uh, but of right, course, it's, it's not easy. You are you are quite an optimist. Uh, when we see in United States removal of uh, some monuments from civil war now, when we saw removal of Franco's monuments in Spain, this uh, memorial wars in Spain. It's no simple story, and it's not only communism. You have now debates with uh, with Ukraine about uh, Volynia massacres and so on. It's the boot, the boot, the boot history of crimes that is coming out. It's 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 broad question, but uh, I think you will not uh, succeed to get out of this Ukraine-Polish relation in killing each other by pop culture. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, that uncontroversial note. <laughs> I think we're going to adjourn for a cup of coffee, and then we're going to come back onto very much the same theme, but concentrating on the horrors of... How much? 15 minutes, 15 minutes and then we're going to concentrate on Croatia. Thank you. <laughs>